Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we are working on Sugary Dew Part 7. It's called Around the Corner. It's actually quite, it's very free motioning uh, reverse applique. So there you go. Check that out. And we're going to make like little Oh, I, I call them like little sunrises because that's what they kind of look like, especially with the yellow fabric. So I've started my row here uh, and I'm, we're almost done. I'm almost done. Okay, oops. Here's, here's, here's one part. Okay, and you need to use either like some sort of foundation paper or some parchment paper or some freezer paper or something like that to help you uh, stabilize as you're going around. Okay, it's really quite cute. And here's my little section. Of course, I got my accent fabric right here at the very tail end. Okay, so we're going to build out a few more. So what you need, I have, of course, uh, parchment paper and you don't want to go farther than four and a half by four and a half with your base of your circle, like the, the, the half part there. And you don't really want to go higher than two and a half ish uh, uh, or a two and a quarter. Okay. So you can free motion your moons. I used for most of mine, I'd free motion some, but I just used a takeout lid and then just went a little bit on the inside of that as I went and uh, stitched it around. But when I go to stitch it around, I wasn't completely right on the line. I wanted to have a little bit of uh, free motion um, um, idea to it, right? So, all right, so we've got a few more to build. So once you get that all traced out, you're going to actually sew it to the back of your fabric or, or no, I guess it would be the front of your fabric, it, especially if you had a patterned fabric. Because what you're going to end up doing is once you trim it out and you're going to do some um, snips to help uh, get that curve to come out right, you're going to take that. Here, let's move this out of the way so you can really see this here. See if it's trimming up some blocks. And then you're just going to fold it. You're going to fold this to the inside. Okay, you're going to fold that paper or stabilizer or what have you. And then this is going to become the right side out. Okay, this is going to be the front of your fabric. And this is where you're going to pin, just like this one here. You're going to pin that on a square of fabric. Making sure not to stretch it. You don't want to stretch it. You just kind of want to make sure it's nice and as even as possible. And you're going to use quite a few pins. And uh, there is the suggestion in the video is making sure you're pinning perpendicular. And then it's easier to pull your pins out. So, and then just lay it down. Then she gives you all the cuts in the link below. So if you want to go and grab them all there, but you pretty much start off with six inch uh, uh, rectangles, six inch by four and a bit, I believe they are. And, um, and then you end up trimming them down to five and a half by, there's a couple of, there's three sizes. There's an A, B and a C block, okay. So, and then that's how that comes together. And it's the same principle. So once you get all that stuff cut out, you turn the right side out, just like that. And then of course you're gonna press it, make it as flat as possible. Okay. I believe we need this one. Yeah, we need this one for the gray. So we need to flatten it out. Okay. And then you put your material right behind it. See, in all those, you can see how those little cuts help um, make the curve happen. Other than that, it would not be as curved as it is, right? Just a little like a fingernail press to keep it nice and flat. And I'm using black thread for this because my background is black and you need to top stitch over your curve here to get your block to finish, okay? So here's another one. Kind of line it up. And pop your pins in and these did, I, I, hopefully we can find something to do with all these little scrappy bits uh, left over from that that would be kind of fun from all the from all the scrappy bits from the project it, it was quite a bit of prep time all the cutting and then all the sewing and then the turning and then 
uh, lining up all the little blocks to go underneath and making sure you got the pins in the right direction and then trying not to sew over the pins. So it, it is a little, um, there is some time involved. It's not going to go like Speedy Gonzales in a couple hours. You got to, you got to plan for, uh, it seems from the, for the cutting of the fabric and the prepping of the fabric, you're looking anywhere, depending on your slow skill from four to eight hours to, to make this all happen. And I'm always more on the eight hour scale for, for this project for sure. Okay. All right, and then we have this one here too. We're, we're going to sew it together, make that as another block section. Oh no, actually that was supposed to go for that one and that was supposed to go for that one or something like that. <laughs> we'll make it happen. All right, so now we're going to take these two that we need sewn and then we're going to put them underneath the machine and get them all sewn up and then we'll come back and we'll square them and we'll put them in our row with our other little sunshines. Sex sunshine on a cloudy day. So you want to make sure your pin cushion is close so you can put your pins in. Okay. And it was just easy to draw with a pencil or a pen your, your circle. Like I said, I used to take out to, um, a lid to help get me some, you know, consistent looking ones. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're all the same. <laughs> but uh, when you go to do that first sew a line um, and then you go in to flip it and you're, you're trimming and then you flip it, uh, that's where you can add a little bit of your own flair to it, right? Don't make it too cray cray though. All right. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to... And then just go slow and steady around. Try and keep a nice, even stay. You can't even see the black thread on this, but if you had something that you maybe wanted to highlight the thread, I even thought about using yellow. I did. I was like, mm, maybe, mm, maybe not. <laughs> but it definitely was a thought. And I was just coming around. Taking the pins that were going to be in the way out as they went, as we went. Okay, lift her up. There we go. Pick that one out. Pull this one out just a little bit so it's not going to, the sewing needle's not going to hit the pin. Okay, there we go. And that's one all the way around. And you have to do this 28 times. You got t 26 regular yellow ones and then you got the two gray ones. So you want to make sure you're having 28 of these arches um, all ready to, to rock and roll. And then you can go get all your fabrics and put them underneath. So Now whether you sew from left to right or right to left, it really doesn't matter. The principle is the same. Just make sure you're going slow and steady. Get a couple stitches in before removing the first pin so you're not losing that bottom part of the arch. You don't want the arch to be flaring out. So try and keep it as nice and as curved as possible for your project. Okay. And don't be afraid to lift your foot and get it back so where you can, it's not like you're trying to, you're sewing off on an angle. You want it to come towards you best we can. And sometimes just helping lift the foot is going to get you there without having to fight with your fabric to get it to come around. Okay, like I said, we want to keep our bottom of our arches nice and taut. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Now we get to square these up to the size they need to be. Oh, sorry. That one there. So one goes with one and one goes with the other. Okay, there we go. And this one I think was just in between. Let's go with the gray first. The gray was supposed to be on the bottom. Let's do this one on the top. And then, oh, nope, that's not the one. That was that one. And that was that one, I think. Maybe. So I'm not lost here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what did I do? I know I set myself up. <laughs> Hopefully I set myself up right. Okay. That seems... Oh, yeah, we got to square them up. That's why. Okay. So this one here, it's a tall one. So we kind of want to make sure we're not cutting too much off the top. We do got a little bit here we could even up. I think this one needs to be... Uh, um, three and three quarters. So we trim it up on the one side. 
and then I lay it on the ruler, but I'm gonna use this, the ruler here, to make sure I'm lining it up correctly there. So it's the one, two, three, and then three quarters. That's a one quarter, that's a half, that's three quarters, and then that would have been four inches. Okay, I think we're right on that one. No, I can add a bit. Okay, and then for this way, we wanna make sure we're five and a half by five and a half, or five and a half, sorry, not five by five and a half, just five and a half. Okay, because we already have this way. So we need to go this way. So what I was doing is I was taking, trying to get this arch to sit right in the center of some of my lines. So I knew if I put my ruler a quarter inch past this line here, and then a quarter inch past this line here would give me my five and a half by five and a half. But I don't, I, you know, she says you can shift your, um, circles to the left or to the right a little bit to add some a different change to your your block that's completely up to you so i'm going to come on this side and go a quarter over and then come over here and make sure it's also a quarter over so that is my five and a half by three and three quarters okay and then of course you've got all your little scrappy bits scrappy bits okay all right so there's that one and then this one here, I believe, is the same size, needs to be the same size. Or I'm making it the same size anyway. All right. Actually, what size was this one? It was the half. Okay. Three quarter, see? Right there. There, and then again, making it to five. On the other side now you can do this any way you like you can trim on the one side where you like it and then flip it around and make you go sure you got your five and a half this was what I found was the easiest for me to do sitting at my desk here trying to make sure everything was nice as well oops I forgot to cheer I was like wondering if I could see gray on the back side whoopsies all right let's trim some of that off okay. make sure you're not cutting through your fabric your your main fabric okay you're just cutting off the, the little half sun shape okay and then this I just kind of ripped right off because we don't need it anymore. Okay. All right. So that was the five and a quarter on the one side. Or sorry, the one quarter on the one side and then one quarter on the other, which gives us five and a half. Okay. There we go. Trimmed up, ready to go. Now, this one I wanted down here. Oh, we do have to need a piece. Actually, we'll put it right in the center. It's okay. What did I do with it? Uh, okay, here, let's put this one in here and then we'll trim it. Make our own shape, okay? And that's why I like, like the, a little bit of um, your own interpretation of the block as well, right? Okay. Now I don't want that much in the center, so I'm gonna trim a little bit off, but the question is how much do we need to trim off? So if we had that there, and then I want to go there, so I need about a quarter off. Okay. Need just over a quarter. Put the gray one at the bottom, and then that's our accent color incorporated into the row. Now this should equal, mine came out about seven and, seven and uh, um, three quarters. So there we go, trim a little bit off the top. Off the top please, sir. just a little bit off the top. All right, so that'll go snug right up against there, perfect. And now these two we're gonna put together, oops again, forgot to trim off the fabric on the back side. Clearly missed a few, but that's all right. And try not to get your paper with your uh, fabric scissors. You would not like that at all. Okay. All right, let's line this one up. This gonna look so gorgeous when together. We've got pinks, we've got blues, we've got greens, we've got yellows, we've got oranges. We got some pretty stunning colors going on here. All right, and then we got that, that, that. And then it sews on to this part. Well, we got ourselves a nice little true choo choo train. <laughs> okay, let's get these two together. 
It may have supposed to have been uh, eight inches, but I got seven and three quarters, so, but that's okay. That's, that's my row. Could have been the way it cut my fabric, could have been my uh, seam allowance, it could have been, could have been, just could have been anything. But I like the flexibility of this whole project. You don't have to be, you know, following everything to, to the letter. Okay, I just want to kind of square up this edge just a little bit before we meet it up to the other section here. Oops. Again, clearly was not as prepared as I anticipated I was going to be. Like I said, this took a little while. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna turn around. I'm making a mess. Surprise. Nope. 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 Not a surprise. Okay. Now I'll get this one over to this one. And that's pretty much half and half. Ish. You can pop some pins in if you need to, to, to keep her nice and uh, straight. All right, and then there. And then that is row seven. Row seven. And we've got eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think. Is there fourteen? Maybe I'm wrong. No, I, I think there's only twelve. Perfect. All right. Now, just a little bit of a press where we just added all those little seams to continue our beautiful row of around the corner of the sugary dew quilt along from 2019. The row should be approximately 70 inches in length, approximately. So let's see how well we did. I think we had a couple that were like 71 and a half. So here's my seam allowance. Ooh, 70, 70, looks like 70 and a half. So not bad, not bad. We can probably trim off one of these sides if we need to, uh, to make her fit. All right, there we go. Thank you everybody for watching, liking and subscribing and joining me here this afternoon to make this beautiful project. We'll see you Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on our live stream and uh, look forward to seeing you there. Take care everybody, have a fantastic weekend. See you soon.